In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray today that Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, will raise us up to new life. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them. O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him, but if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord.
your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, The illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We are created, body and soul. This is an important and profound theological statement. It gets at the core of who we are and how we are. Our second reading from St. Paul to the Romans talks about being in the flesh. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God, he says. To be in the flesh means to dwell there, to invest completely in the flesh, to be concerned first and foremost with satisfying the desires of the flesh. To be in the flesh means to be so caught up with our fleshly desires that we neglect our soul. We would naturally tend toward feeding the flesh. Life in this world is physical. It is fleshly. Naturally, what we can see, hear, touch, taste, and feel is most real to us and often captures our attention first. I can tell when my friend is hungry because he gets grumpy and he's just not himself. I call it hangry, a combination of hungry and angry. I know to watch out in those moments. The flesh often seems like it's in control. Our flesh has so many hungers, food, drink, sex, pleasure of all sorts. Sometimes we indulge our flesh too much, and those hungers of the flesh are perpetual. We can feed one of the hungers, but soon we will need to feed it again. Here is one of the reasons that we fast during Lent. We fast to deny our flesh so that we can be reminded that we are both body and soul. We say no to our flesh. You can't have everything you want when you want it. We discipline our flesh. We train our flesh. Denying our flesh, food, drink, and pleasure is a way of training it, reminding it who really is in charge. 
That's why fasting during Lent is accompanied by praying and almsgiving. If it were just about fasting and self-denying, we would end up being a little bit masochistic. We pray and give alms as a way to feed our soul. We deny the body and feed the soul. It's sort of a turning upside down of the normal way that we live our lives. It is so important to feed our soul, and not just during Lent. Taking time to be quiet in order to let sacred silence feed our soul is good for us. Spending time in God's creation to see his beauty is a way of feeding our soul. Reading scripture or other spiritual things is a way of feeding our soul. Giving to others feeds our soul. I think we know this deep down because it feels good to give of ourselves to someone else. Now, I've talked about denying the body and feeding the soul, but remember, we are both body and soul, and our body has a place in God's plan too. That's why we don't abuse our bodies. We need to be good stewards of the body that God has given to us. Notice God's plan for the body. We see it in the first reading and in the gospel. Resurrection. The Lord will raise us up in the flesh and reunite our glorified body and our soul one day. I said glorified body because it will be renewed. It will be free of sickness, free of fatigue, and it will be full of God's splendor. We are not just a body and we are not just a soul. Both need to go together. It's a matter of finding the balance. Too often, though, we feed the body and we forget about the soul. And Lent is a good time to change that. We have the opportunity soon to feed both our body and soul in the best way that we can here on earth, the Eucharist. The bread from heaven is food for our bodies and food for our souls. It is food for the journey. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the faith and hope of Martha, let us call upon the Lord in prayer. that she, she may be defended from the snares of her enemies through the Spirit of Christ, who makes his home in her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the peoples of this world, that they may be gathered into the Father's kingdom through the prayers and sacrifices of Christians in every nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dying, that they may pass peacefully and confidently through the gates of death to meet him who is the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn, that the Christ who wept for Lazarus, his friend, may console them in their grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that the Lord may unbind them and let them go free in the kingdom of his glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, our Redeemer, you cried for your friend Lazarus, and you raised him from the tomb. Raise us up from the tombs of sin and death to your life of understanding and hope. Hear the prayer we offer to you, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb. Just as, taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, 
and Robert, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.